G'day, welcome to Alice Springs Desert Park and the Discover the Desert online program. Um, my name's Mark, I'm a guide here at Alice Springs Desert Park. Now, you might realize that we're not inside the main area of the park. Um, the main area of the park, um, where we have all the animals and the botanic gardens, um, is only part of the story. The desert park is set within a very big nature reserve um, that covers uh, almost a thousand hectares and runs all the way from very close to the edge of Alice Springs right out to the end of the mountain there that you can see in the background, that's Mount Gillen. It's a very beautiful landscape and very varied. There's an awful lot of biodiversity in that nature reserve um, spread out. And it's often something that people don't realize when they come to the park that um, this whole area is actually part of Desert Park. Um, we're very proud of it and a lot of it's very special. We've got some wonderful tree specimens and there's one today that I really want to tell you about because it's one of my favorites. It's one of the most iconic trees in Central Australia as well. Um, the famous artist Albert Namajira painted them as part of his landscapes, made individual trees famous, but the species as a whole is pretty famous. It's called the ghost gum. And there's a beautiful example right here behind me. Very tall, statuesque tree, very straight trunk on this one, going up to a very beautiful, lush green canopy on the top. Quite small leaves, but they're a beautiful lime green color, very, very bright colors. Um, that white trunk and that green canopy against the blue sky with the red rocks in the background, that really is about as iconic Central Australia as you can get. It really is a magical tree. Um, I feel really lucky to have these and they're very common. They're a really common tree and that's because they're successful, they're very tough, they can take fire, they can take heat and drought and they've got all sorts of adaptations that help them deal with that. And one of the biggest ones is that white bark. So follow me in, we're gonna go in and have a look at that bark. So when you get closer to the tree, you can see that bark is really, really bright. It's not actually a color, a pigment in the bark. It's actually a powder on the surface. The tree grows it. If I just rub it here, you can see it starts to come off and you can see the powder's left on my hand. So the tree grows that powder and um, what happens is it reflects heat, it reflects light, it keeps the inside of the tree that bit cooler. It also helps prevent the heat from fires from penetrating too deeply into the tree. This is one of the best adapted trees to dealing with wildfires out here. The grass fires come through and they'll scorch it. You'll see these, the white powder maybe even can be burnt off or it can be covered in soot, but the powder very quickly starts to regrow. It's remarkable how quickly these trees turn white again. And you can end up with the landscapes where you get burnt ground, but these stark, beautiful white trees left behind. It really is an iconic um, look. They're wonderful trees. They're very important for biodiversity as well. They form hollows, which a lot of birds like to nest in, birds like budgies, right up in the canopy. When they flower, that's attractive to some of our honey eaters. But one of the big ways that they function in the landscape is as a source of food for caterpillars. Moth caterpillars in particular can infest some of these trees and they'll really, really chew all of the branches. You'll sometimes see branches or even entire trees that have been completely stripped by caterpillars. Those caterpillars might seem like a bad thing. The tree recovers really quickly, no problem at all. But those caterpillars go on to feed a huge range of wildlife, birds, bats, all sorts of things, other insects, dragonflies even, all sorts of creatures that rely on the energy this tree's capturing from the sun, turning it into leaves, turning that into caterpillars, and then that energy spreads out throughout the landscape. Um, so those sort of ecological interactions, we call them, are very common in deserts. They're very, very important. Animals and plants rely on each other to a huge extent. And understanding that really helps you get to grips with what life in the desert is all about. So. In future, we're going to be talking about animals, we're going to be talking about plants, we're going to be talking about the landscape, but we're always going to try and pull it back to talking about how those individual species link out to the greater landscape to other species. And um, everything in the desert's interlinked. It's a really important story. So, this is the desert ghost gum, really important tree in Central Australia. Next time you're out and about, get a good look at them and really appreciate how magical this particular plant is. We're really lucky to have them. Thanks for watching.